you're a newly minted remote pilot. Congratulations. And as luck would have it, you've secured your first job. Now after doing a little bit of research, you realize that job requires you to fly near an airport such as the one we're at today. Well, how do you do that safely and legally? In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do just that. So I'm here at Taylor Municipal Airport in Taylor, Texas. Now this airport is what you call a pilot controlled airport, as opposed to those bigger, a bit more busier airports like your class Delta, class Charlie, and class Bravo airports, which all have operating control towers. Now we can operate in and near all of these airports. There's just a certain way to do that. So here's the rules, regulations, and tips on how to go about doing just that. Now, if you plan on flying near airports that are in what is deemed that uncontrolled airspace and remain under 400 feet AGL, that's above ground level, prior authorization to fly here is not required. Now, this is your class G or class golf airspace. It extends up from the surface to the overlying class E or class echo airspace. Now we'll deal with that more complex controlled environment in just a second. So when you, the remote pilot, are operating in or near such airspace or airport environments, you must remember a few key things. One, you need to know what traffic patterns are, which traffic patterns are active that day, as well as what runways are active, so you can see and avoid these areas at all time. Remember, you must avoid takeoff and landing areas as well, so as not to interfere with any manned operations in or near that airport or airspace environment. So one way to figure out what traffic patterns are being used at the airport you're flying nearby is to look at something called the chart supplement. And this will help you figure out what traffic patterns are used for certain runways. Now you can also listen to something called ATIS, ASOS, or AWOS, depending on the airport you're flying nearby. This gives pilots information about what runways are being used as the active runway, as well as weather information and other things going on in the airport environment. This can be especially useful for drone pilots as well. Now something I like to do, if at all possible, is I like to talk to the airport manager ahead of time, whether that's in person, on the phone, or by email. I just like to make sure they know what's going on near their airport and it's a great way to make friends as well. Now this isn't a legal requirement, but I believe communication is key and it really just helps everyone be safer and enjoy flying that much more. Now for the flight near airports in controlled airspace, drone operators must receive an airspace authorization prior to operation. Now, airspace authorizations come with altitude limitations and they may or may not include operational provisions as well. And that's something you can find in the documentation. Now, controlled airspace would be Class Delta, Class Charlie, Class Bravo, and Class Echo airports. Now, a large amount of our, our airspace over the United States is Class Echo airspace. And this is largely in part to help with traffic separation and safe operations during IFR operations of manned aircraft. Now the base of Class E or Class Echo airspace typically starts at 700 feet AGL and some instances at 1200 feet AGL. Now there can be instances where Class E airspace starts at the surface due to protecting those instrument approaches at the pilot controlled or uncontrolled airfields. To fly in these controlled airspace environments, you would need to file prior authorization or what is called a LANCE. LANCE is our low altitude authorization and notification capability. Basically, it's a collaboration between the FAA and you, the drone pilot, and it helps directly integrate uh, our UAS into airspace environments. Now, the easiest way to file and receive that all-important documentation from the FAA is to use an app on your mobile device. Applications such as Aloft 
Air Control and the popular Before You Fly app allow you to file and receive Lance authorizations prior to Part 107 operations in near real time before beginning your flight in these controlled airspace environments. Now you can also get these same authorizations through the FAA drone zone as well and that link will be down below in the video description. So I hope that helps clear up a few things and make things just a little bit easier on how to fly in these different environments. Now all of this important information we just discussed will be provided in links below the video to help you out. So reach out to us if you have any questions. Stay safe, keep flying, and remember a good pilot is always learning. We'll see you guys.